Hey everyone, before we start this episode, we have a quick little announcement. If you've ever wanted to work with the Command Zone team, we have two fresh new opportunities for you. Yeah, some really cool stuff. If you are a graphic designer, we are looking for freelancers to help us out with things like thumbnails and all the graphic design work we do here. This is a remote position, so you can be located anywhere. There are links for that opportunity in the show notes. And then we're also looking to hire a full-time position for somebody to join our art department. Now, you would need to be located in LA for this job because you're going to be here in our office working with Lady Danger directly and the rest of our production team on all kinds of things like building our sets, wardrobe, costumes, things like that. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, again, all those links are in the show notes. All right, on to the show. Greetings, humans. You have entered the Command Zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks, and today we have a special guest. It's Jake Boss. Party on, Rachel. Thanks for joining me, Jake. Thank you for having me again <laughs> for another controversial deck upgrade. Oh, yeah. Today we are upgrading the Elven... Elven... Council. Council. <laughs> she didn't read the title. Deck. <laughs> it's the Elf one, I yeah. know. It's the Elven Council Green and Blue Precon. Uh, and we had Jake do the upgrades on this. Today we're going to go through what's in the box. Uh <laughs> We're not going uh, there. <laughs> we're not going to go as far as what's in the box, but we're going to talk about the statistics of the deck in the box, and we're going to suggest 10 cards to add to get this deck into fighting shape, and of course, 10 cards to take out to make room for those cards. If you want to buy cards, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has the best selection of Magic Card singles and sealed product on the internet, and I love shopping at Card Kingdom, especially when a new set is coming out, because I like to buy my deck all at once in one place so it shows up in one package safe and sound and i can get sleeving and get that deck to my next game nights or lunch mander yeah uh, we play a lot of commander at lunch over here yeah you know for a long time people always thought you guys play a whole bunch of commander the office no yeah. but yeah we've been doing a whole lot of lunch mander and we see yeah. tons of rachel's many decks yeah <laughs> it's fun where you get to test your decks in front of like in front of your coworkers, and I trust Card Kingdom to get those cards to me on time so I can get playing them as soon as possible. Again, support the show while you're buying magic cards at cardkingdom.com slash command. And to get that deck to put your that box to put your deck into, there you go. Go to ultrapro. This joke's coming in for a landing. Com <laughs> slash command. Ultrapro has high quality magic accessories to keep your magic cards safe and organized and looking cool. Uh, Ultrapro. Ultrapro's. I mean, especially for this set, the art is completely out of this world. And Ultrapro has all of the official li licensed magic art, uh, like. Lord of the Rings has got to be one of the biggest art sets oh, yeah. in recent history. There's a lot of logos on these playmat. You'll see yeah. the Planeswalker logo, but that Middle Earth Entertainment logo means that this is like All approved, approved. by the Tolkien Brood. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, there's tons of cool playmats and sleeves. And if you're a Lord of the Rings fan like we are, you can get all of those at ultrapro.com slash command. Support the show. Protect your cards. Show off your Lord of the Rings stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and again the final way to support us is directly at patreon.com slash command zone all of our patrons get access to extra turns and game nights a day early you get to watch and see for yourself you get to be the one who knows how the game ends plus you get access to exclusive content like turn talks which is us just talking about the game that just happened on extra turns it's a ton of fun to record and i i think you really get to know a game yeah. in turn talks like you watch the game and you're like that was cool but you get to know the the thought process of the players in the yeah. game on turn talks. it's about the emotions uh, less yeah. about the intellectual analysis yeah. of the game which is you know really easy given time uh but you can't get that emotion back yeah really. uh, yeah i had that thing in my hand and i was gonna go and then that fire decays over time turn talks lets you uh observe that fire <laughs> <laughs> it's, it it's that if i had one more turn moment it's a it's a ton of fun become a patron so you get access to that stuff but also just you support the show and make it better and better plus we shout out one lucky patron every single podcast episode and this one is dedicated to scott, scott fryer scott you rock thank you 
All right, let's get into it. Today, we are talking about upgrading the Elven Council Precon. This is a green, blue, Simic Elves slash voting deck. It's Yeah, that's a heavy slash, too. It, yeah. The slash is in bold. Because uh, it does both things pretty well. Yeah. Uh, overall, man, this box is pretty stinking good. It's man, these these precons are high power and they're doing a lot. The they're, hardest part of yeah. this upgrade was the cuts. You're like, well, that's really helpful because this or yeah. uh, you know, so the cuts got really hard. So pick up this box and you've got a deck. Yeah. We are going to do 10, take 10 cards out. We're going to add 10 cards. But first, we're going to get to know the deck so we know that we are doing the best upgrade possible. Uh, so let's talk a bit about, a bit about no. the... <laughs> Let's talk about the com legendaries in the deck that could potentially be the commander. Now, normally there are two options. In this deck... <laughs> what? Yeah, what? There, there are six Simic legendaries that could all legally be in the command zone of this deck. <laughs> that should be illegal. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk through all of them fairly briefly, just so you get to know your options and the many directions that this deck could go. Yeah, you could easily disagree with me on these, swap out uh, the commander and have a totally different experience. Yeah. Or depending on the table you're at, maybe swap out for a different commander. Super fun. I love having a modal uh, commander yeah. deck. Well, let's get to know the face commander of this deck first. Do you want to read Galadriel? Galadriel, Elven Queen. It's two, a green and a blue for a legendary creature, Elf Noble. She's a four five with Will of the Council, which means we're going to be doing some voting. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, if another elf entered the battlefield under your control this turn, starting with you, each player votes for Dominion or Guidance. If Dominion gets more votes, the ring tempts you, then you put a plus one, plus one counter on your ring bearer. If Guidance gets more votes or the vote is tied, draw a card. So I have an elf enter the battlefield. Then I get to do this vote of, do I get to beef up a ring bearer and have mm -hmm. the ring tempt me? Or am I just getting a card? Yeah. For those of you who haven't seen the ring tempts you mechanic, it creates an emblem that is called the ring. And you sort of get more abilities from the ring. And that emblem maintains all of those abilities. So the first time the ring tempts you, you give target creature becomes legendary and gets uh, essentially skulk. Can't be blocked by creatures with power greater than it. The second ability is whenever it attacks, it loots. The third ability is whenever it becomes blocked at the end of combat, uh, the block blocking creature gets sacrificed and the final ability is whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player each opponent loses three life is what it is so as the ring tempts you you can choose a new ring bearer and you gain an additional ability it's sort of like a dungeon that sticks that accrues value rather than like yeah. gives you one at a time and it seems overly complicated at, on its face, mm -hmm. but I'll just say she doesn't have a reference card in front of her and yeah. she's still got it. So yeah, I'm good. <laughs> You'll hope. remember it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just as we immerse ourselves <laughs> into this period, I think it'll get a little bit simpler for, for everybody. For sure. Um, and there are plenty of options if you're not into the ring to MCU. But uh, Galadriel, so Galadriel is more elf focused. It has a vote right on it. it. She assumes that you will be playing elves, yes. which is not a hard thing to yeah. do, but it is, you got to punch the clock and do your business to get this, uh, to get the vote to even happen. Right. Then the vote has to go your way. Mm -hmm. Like, listen, I'm, I'm not good at whipping votes at the table. Okay. <laughs> like that's part of the, through this whole deck upgrade, I'm focusing on, I will not have control of this vote. Right. So the two options being beef up a ring bearer or draw a card as long as I pay my dues is not that exciting to me. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it, it's... But okay. it indicates what the deck is doing. Yeah, it gives it you a what pretty good perspective of the deck at large. Uh, the second commander that is available to you and probably... I don't, I don't know. It, it takes the deck in a completely different direction. It's Gandalf Westward Voyager. Not an elf. Three, a green and a blue for an avatar wizard. He's a 5-5, five, five, so a 5-5 five, five for 5. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, each opponent reveals the top card of their library. If any of those cards share a card type with that spell, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, and each opponent draws a card. Otherwise, you draw a card. 
So that text is kind of confusing. A little bit. So confusing. let's walk through once at a uh, one time. I'm going to play a big spell. Yeah. Uh, then everybody reveals the top card of their deck. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's say I cast a creature. Okay? Yeah. Okay. And you reveal a creature. Yes. So since Off you the top did of that, my library is a creature. Now I get to copy my spell. Okay. Because that spell is not talking about that card because mm -hmm. your card is not. A not, spell. Not a spell on the stack. Yeah. Because it hasn't been cast. Okay. So if you cast an Avenger of Zendikar and I reveal an Acidic Slime, you get two Avengers of Zendikars. One of them becomes a token. You make a ton of plants. Ah! Uh, but all of your <laughs> opponents draw a card. Yeah. If you cast the Avenger of Zend Zendikar and nobody reveals a creature off the top of their library, then you just draw a card instead. Yeah, so I'm I'm okay. betting that I, I know what your deck is trying to do yeah. or assuming that, you know, I'll, I'll get more value. But let's say I'm playing a creature deck against three spell slinger decks. Mm -hmm. I might not cast my commander. <laughs> this is a very interesting combination with Galadriel because elf ball tends to be like fairly low to the ground. Like elves tend to have one to three CMC mm -hmm. and Gandalf is begging for five CMC spells. Yeah. What's he doing in this deck? He doesn't belong here. He can't <laughs> sit with us. <laughs> <laughs> I love this art, but it is definitely sort of a strange side quest to this <laughs> deck. Uh, definitely a cool card though. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's neat, and I think that you're probably going to build this deck. Although, <laughs> there's a lot of cards in the sheet that I think that she's going to be building. So I Honestly, I build every card once, every deck <laughs> once. I see it, I'm like, I'm just going to put together a little list on Architect and see what happens. That's easy. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Architect. <laughs> All right, so that's two of the optional commanders. The next one is my favorite and easily the worst commander for the deck, probably. <laughs> oh, this is a goofball card. It is Searden the Shipwright. Three green blue for an elf noble. He's a 3-4 with vigilance. He's an elf. Okay. And he has secret counsel. Uh, it says, whenever Searden the Shipwright enters the battlefield or attacks, so a titany, uh, each player secretly votes for a player. And then those votes are revealed. Each player draws a card for each vote they received. Each player who received no votes may put a permanent card from their hand onto the battlefield. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, so it's me, you, Josh, and Jimmy. Yeah. Okay? So this thing triggers. Yeah. And, and we all go. Like, we're all nervous, okay? Because yeah. Jimmy's over there, and he's telling us, oh, if you vote for me, I'll vote for you. Yeah. And I'm like... Okay, uh... But somebody has to vote for Josh, because with Josh is playing a creature with a deck with Eldrazi's in it. And what if I'm lying? Then I will get something for free? Yeah. Or you'll get something for free? So you kind of want... The ideal situation is everybody votes for one player once. Right. And the worst situation is everybody votes for the same person, and then three people cheat stuff into play. <laughs> so... So one player draws four cards, and everybody puts stuff into play. <laughs> Now that's fun. I it's, mean, man, I, I love this commander design because the tough thing about voting is in voting cards in, in the past, there's a very clear vote where you're like, don't give them an extra turn. You give right. them one of your permanents, you know, right. unexpropriate. This, no idea. No yeah. idea what you're supposed to do. Yeah, because it's uh, <laughs> the worst thing that could happen is what? Savala Stampede? You always yeah. vote for hand on that one anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. But yeah, I, I could build this deck and then say, everybody vote for me, give me the cards, and you can have the permanents. Yeah. I won't vote for any of you. Yeah. Hmm. What do you do then? That's what happens if there's a telepathy in play? I want to think about this commander all day. <laughs> uh, like <laughs> I, I do like that this commander scales with uh, the play group. Yeah. So let's say I'm playing with my family who's got lower power decks or mm -hmm. something. This goes well with them. Yeah. It's sort of a, a weird green green braids. Yeah. I, I like Searden a lot. I don't think he lends himself to being the commander of this deck. He doesn't really care about elves. He doesn't really care about big spells, which is also like a sub-theme of the deck. Uh, but it does create this incredible puzzle. And if you just want to play <laughs> Searden, do it. I yeah. believe in you. It's awesome. He, he's not getting this part, but we would like him to read for someone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. Who's the next one? All right. Next one is Elrond of the White Council. Three, a green and a blue for a 3-3 three, three legendary creature elf noble. Again, with secret council. Mm -hmm. When Elrond... Elrond of the White Council enters the battlefield. Each player secretly votes for fellowship or aid. Then those votes are revealed. For each fellowship vote, the voter chooses a creature they control. You gain control of each creature chosen this way, and they gain this creature can't attack its owner. Then for each aid vote, put a 1-1 counter on each creature you control. So buff the board or take your 
least desirable dude mm. from your your opponents. And this is an ETB uh, vote. So right. when Elrond enters the battlefield, uh, it's it's worth noting that everybody votes and it happens for each vote. So each player will be like, you can get my thing or you can get my thing. And then, but if multiple people vote for plus one, plus one counters, which I imagine if you're playing Elrond, you vote for plus one, plus one counters. <laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> probably. You don't uh, want to gain control yeah. <laughs> of the creature that you control. And just make it slightly worse. Yeah. Uh, you get plus one, plus one counters for each vote of, of what is it, aid? I yes. don't know. The, the, this, I'm not ecstatic about this templating where they yeah. write names for this stuff, like vote counters or vote creature. Yeah, exactly. Come on. <laughs> exactly. It's a little bit clearer that way. Elrond seems sweet. It's a ton of power to put on the board uh, in with one five drop. Yeah, as far as voting commanders that we've seen so far, uh, the enter the battlefield rather than at the beginning of combat, if you've done this, mm -hmm. then you may have that. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just would rather have a clean exchange. I pay you mana, you give me the thing. Yeah, That's it. <laughs> you want to give me your creature? Oh, you also get the creatures and then you put counters on it, is the way, right. it's, is the way it's worded. Important clarification. Mm. Uh, okay, this next one is more clearly a voting commander. It's Aristor of the Council. It's one green blue for an elf noble. It's a 2 4. It says, Whenever players finish voting, each opponent who voted for a choice you voted for creates a treasure token. Ooh, you bribe them. Wow. Then it says, You scry X, where X is the number of opponents who voted for a choice you didn't vote for. Draw a card. So it's a little bit of a bribery. It's like, if you give me what I want, you can have a lotus petal. It's not bribery, that's just politics. Yeah. That's how th these things work. You'll get used to it. <laughs> Welcome to Mordor or Middle Earth. So this one's very focused on the voting thing and doesn't seem to be doing much else other than being an elf. Okay, Radagast. <laughs> Along those same lines, Radagast is a uh, four mana, three five, legendary creature, avatar, wizard with ward one. It says beasts and birds you control have ward one. Whenever you cast a spell with converted mana, co mana cost five or greater, choose one. You either create a 3-3 three, three beast or create a 2-2 two, two bird. Uh, very flavorful mm -hmm. and cool. Uh, what It doesn't belong in this deck. It's a little strange. It it It's reminiscent of Gandalf. It's doing the same like 5 CMC or greater thing. Yeah. Uh, but... It, yeah, the the birds and beasts are sort of strange in a deck that is predominantly <laughs> elves. Uh, yeah, I, I in a set like this that's not going through standard, wh why not just put this in the modern product, the regular set? I don't know. The, the draft set? Yeah, he doesn't necessarily hang out with the elves, Radagast. Well, He's not going to bust modern open <laughs> or anything. I don't know. <laughs> so whenever you cast a five drop, you may either make like a buff creature on the ground or a little evasive creature. I think you just get the tutu bird most of the time. Two -two, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. I think you're right. Yeah. Um, cool commander. Probably not for this deck in this box, but uh, let's get to know this deck, uh, which means we're going to break down the... <laughs> Stats. stats 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 guess what they're good they are good uh so let's let's talk about just the generic pieces that go in every every commander deck first all right we got 18 pieces of ramp 11 pieces of card draw single target interaction 11 mm -hmm. uh, bop 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 two board wipes which is a little low uh but nowadays with all that single target removal totally fine lands 38 this looks like a pretty solid commander deck. Like, these are the numbers that right. I start on. I tend, don't tend to run 11 pieces of single targeted removal, probably have one more board wipe than that. But this is this is close. And it, what you expect from an elf deck, yep. like 18 pieces of ramp is sort of the big thing to call out here. And that makes sense because it is an elf deck. And it feels like that's why the uh, Gandalf and Radagast are in here mm -hmm. is because, yeah, you can slot in big spells. And what do you do when you first start playing Commander? Let's say you bought this box. Mm -hmm. This is your first deck. Uh, you're going to take one of the 38 lands, turn it into 36, 37, baby, mm -hmm. uh, and throw in a big, stupid spell that you can't play anywhere else. That's what we do in Commander. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so all that ramp is going to support that natural progression that every Commander player goes through. Yeah, I think this is, you're right, this is very clear, where they're saying you could make this an elf deck, or mm -hmm. you could make this a big mana deck. Right. And that's where these, the the Gandalf or the Radagasts are coming in, and then you could you could build it more as just, I'm here to cast big haymakers, yeah. rather than doing the more... 
elf it, it's support. a fork in the road but when you're first playing this deck as a big lord of the rings fan you'll say "Ooh, radagast that's fun and then it'll <laughs> never trigger and then you'll rethink your life yeah all right so let's look at what uh, the more specific parts of this deck. So we're going to talk about uh, the specific pieces that make this deck work. All right. So we got 23 elves, six anthems, five defense, and voting eight. Now, Rachel, explain defense. What does that mean? There's a lot of protection in this deck. So that's either to protect your board or that's to protect your life total. Mm -hmm. So I like to use defense as just protecting you from what your opponents are doing. And that could be anything from uh, like all my stuff gains indestructible to a fog. Mm -hmm. But it's just to kind of the deck is a little bit slow, I think. So, so they did time. put in some things to just protect you and make sure that uh, you can get to the late game. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Only eight voting cards in here, I think, is a big number to look at. Yeah. Well, in these colors, surprisingly, there are a few voting cards. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, how many do you want? If the answer is eight, you're in luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think what this says is that there's just not enough voting cards for something like Aristor in the in the command zone, which yeah. is a dedicated voting commander and it right the some of these voting commanders that are going to vote so many times mm -hmm. want more voting support but that just isn't there in these colors right so they end up probably being 99 cards yeah okay um so this says what the deck is doing we're with a ton of elves uh six anthem says we're definitely trying to go wide generally uh anthem effects being anything that pumps your board anything that puts counters on your board there is sort of a like a simic counters sub theme going on in this deck as well and uh may not be totally focused on voting unless we have one of the voting commanders in the command zone so who do you think out of the six commanders that we've talked about suits this 99 best who stu suits these statistics best for me i wanted to stay with gladriel so badly i wanted to stick with the face commander mm -hmm. but my problem was you have to punch the time card and cast that elf every turn if you want to get that ability at the beginning of combat. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cast my spell, let it resolve, and then hope that when I say go to combat, somebody's not going to pop Gladriel. Right. So I went with Elrond of the White Council because it's an ETB. It's a more straight across the table trade. I cast the card, it resolves, I get my thing. Um, and then there are a few other tricky things that we can do with the ETB. But yeah, it's value today rather than, wow, if I keep this going, you're mm -hmm. not going to keep it going. Like if you're that far ahead, somebody's going to do something about you. So Elrond is also the most generically good, I think, of yeah. the commanders. So it, it, he puts a Band-Aid on these many themes that the deck has going for it. Like these big mana spells. There's a number of X spells in the deck. Mm -hmm. um, he he sort of says, I'm here to give you value. And it's value that you're going to want regardless of what's in the deck. Counters are great. Cards are, are stealing stuff. Great. Yeah. So you have to ask yourself, how many times uh, would I need this ability to trigger mm -hmm. for me to be happy with my choices this uh, with this commander mm -hmm. with Elrond, I would say two times. If I, if I hit it two times, uh, I could probably swing a game using this ability and cause and, and influence things. But with Galadriel, if I don't trigger that three or four times, I'm not feeling great. Mm -hmm. Uh, so she has to stick around and you have to cast the thing. Like what if you run out of gas, this, that, the third, it's just simpler to stick with Elrond. Yeah. Swing year. All right. I like that choice a lot. Um, and it's, it, it, you know, there there are a ton of options here and a ton of really cool commanders. But again, we are talking about the commander that is going to work best for what's in this box. Right. Uh, we're not building a deck from scratch. We're not saying that this card is the most powerful or the coolest deck. Elrond is just going to offer the most for you in the command zone with the Elven Council. Uh, okay, we're going to talk about what we've talked about what is in the box mechanically, but we're going to talk about what's in the box financially next. The reprint value. Uh, before we get into it, I do have a number of caveats that we always go through when we talk about these things. All of these prices are taken before these reprints are announced, which means that the numbers will go down, but we w are using these numbers largely comparatively to decks in the past. We're taking them all at the same time. We've taken the, this reprint value before uh, the lists are released every time, so those numbers do relate to each other. However, <laughs> these 
boxes are more expensive than pre-cons of the past. These are going for roughly $55 right now, uh, anywhere between 50 and I've seen as high as 60. The, the uh, value is there though. They yeah, take care of you. They do. Um, but it's about $10 more than what you would normally see in a pre-con. Also, there's a lot more new cards. So there are fewer reprints, which means that the total reprint value is representing 50 cards as opposed to the typical 70 or something like that. So... Those are all of the caveats, uh, but ha- having gotten that out of the way, let's Editor, talk about this cue up total the happy music. Here it comes. Print value because it is one hundred and forty-four dollars and fifty cents. We're paying the rent this month. Woo! What? That's the highest number I've ever seen. That's pretty good. $144.50. And I want to say this is only representing the 49 reprints in the deck. So it's only 50 cards represented in $144. Yeah, it's not like spread across, you know, 70 cards. Right. Or, yeah. a, with a bunch of little stuff that nobody cares about. Like you're getting set up for yeah. a career in Commander. <laughs> so, like, the $145.50 represents. Like only half the deck, and you get all of these new cards that are currently priceless uh, right. because we don't we don't know what they're worth yet. But so the total box value could be double, triple. Like I mean, currently that's three times the the price value ish. Who's to say, really? Who's to say? Someone who knows math. <laughs> this is a very good deck in many ways, and you should probably pick up this box. It's a wise financial decision. Yeah. Uh, direct your partner to this video, and I'll explain it to him. Yeah. For reference, uh, this number is significantly higher than decks we've seen in the past. We're comparing it to precons that had a similar number of reprinted cards. So uh, these are cards that had anywhere between like 50 and 60 reprint cards in the deck. Uh, I did have to go back a little ways. So uh, the Aquaria Commander decks were average reprint value was at $96. Strixhaven averaged at $88. Forgotten Realms averaged around 115 And remember how excited we were about that. <laughs> And Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, which had about 50 reprints in the deck, was also famously low at only $73. So we know that this deck is a humdinger. We know it is worth the value. Let's talk about the significant cards that make up those $144. So should we start with the little ones or the big ones? We're going to start with the big ones. Oh, Why baby. not? We're starting from the top. There are nine cards that are worth $5 or more at this time of recording. And the first one is awesome. Heroic Intervention. Heroic Intervention. So this is one of the defense cards. It is currently worth $23 despite a couple of reprints. And it's worth every penny, folks. Yeah, this always happens like turn eight, turn nine or something. Or Heroic Intervention can change the game. Yeah. And especially in this deck, we love it. Uh, Yeah. Switching to Elrond means the deck really wants to go wide because you're stealing stuff, you're you're putting counters on stuff, more bodies is better. So having something that protects you when you've overcommitted to the board is huge. And speaking of protection, this next one is a big reprint as well. It's Swan Song, all the way up at $17 right now. A uh, great counter spell, especially for countering board wipes. Hey. Okay, and then the next one is Rejuvenating Springs, one of the great dual lands uh, in Commander. I think it's one of the Battle Bond lands, is that right? Uh, yes. Commander Legends? Uh, maybe. It would be a maybe. Sporty I think it was name first it was in Commander Battle Legends. Man. It was first in Commander Legends. Battle Bond type land. Yeah, it's, it's the... It comes in you, untapped. It comes in untapped. You can't fetch for it, and it's sitting at $15 right now. I love seeing Rejuvenating Springs. It's a big kid land. It's a real land. It's a real land people play, and it's in this deck. And you only have to read it sometimes. Yeah. After you've killed people. <laughs> the next one is Asceticism, sitting at $14. Uh, this is a very expensive reprint. I don't think Asceticism sees a ton of play these days. It's a little expensive. It, Old school. Yeah, it's sort of a commander of the past card. Yeah. But nice to see a reprint nonetheless. And then we got the booty Lightning Greaves, $11. Still $11, my God. The Lightning Greaves goes in this deck for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's great to see it here. Uh, Elvish Piper at $8.50. A great reprint. Very flavorful here. Genesis Wave, $6.75. Yeah, that's one of our big mana payoffs and so much fun to cast. Uh, Overwhelming Stampede at $6. Really? That is insane. I know. They haven't reprinted it in a while. Huh. So glad to see it here. This is a great win con, especially for go-wide decks like Elrond. And then Flooded Grove, another classic Commander Land. 
untapped green blue land all right we're gonna go through the five cards between two dollars and five dollars real quick another great land hinterland harbor a great elves payoff elvish war master uh whisper silk cloak all the way up at two dollars and 75 cents looking at you whisper silk cloak mm. getting up there beast within is two dollars and fifty cents and soul ring refuses to be brought down at two dollars and twenty five cents. Why do you hate Soul Ring? It's, it's just it, it, we can't get it under two dollars. It's always on this list. <laughs> it's reprinted in every single pre It's Like eleven it's times still, a year. Yeah. Yeah. There's no card that's more reprinted. It feels like, and it's still two bucks. Uh, I do want to say that like these are all awesome reprints, and these are excited like reprints we're excited about just to see. Yeah. Like just on any version of them, having them reprinted is huge. But all of the cards in these decks have Lord of the Rings art, which means they're going to be specific to this box. Like they're yeah. going to be art unique, basically. There's there's a lot of cards that I'm seeing. Like uh, it's not in this deck, but somebody called out Mindstone. Mm -hmm. uh, they just adapt to the art. Uh, right. of, of this world and it's really cool it's really cool so like the the value of these reprints honestly feels higher than just a regular reprint because you're not just getting the soul ring with with a traditional art that we all have hundreds of mm -hmm. you're getting the soul ring with like sauron ogling it let's uh we talked about the, the most expensive card in the deck but that doesn't necessarily mean those are the best cards in the deck so before we uh move on to the upgrade let's talk about what cards are you happiest that you have in your hand? These are the ones that when you draw it, you're like, yes, I have what I want and I feel confident. Well, uh, this first choice I feel weird about. It's Mystic Confluence. Uh, one of our favorite counter spells in Commander. But the second mode of bouncing a creature to its owner's hand, the versatility that you're allowed with Mystic Confluence to choose whatever modes you need at the time is probably going to help us with our commander's ability of uh, our opponents either give us the, the weakest, crappiest thing they control, or they give us counters. Mm -hmm. So we're making that choice even harder for them by bouncing their second best thing so that we're certainly getting their best thing. On top of it, Mystic Confluence, just a good card. Yeah, it always feels good in hand. I mean, it. you could even bounce Elrond and recast Elrond for a new vote if oh. you want to pressure them even further. She's cracking the code. Yeah. Yeah, the, we got to find ways to abuse Elrond in this deck, and Mystic Confluence is another great way to do that mm -hmm. in a couple of different ways. Another one is Heroic Intervention. Oh, yeah. We got to save the stolen gang. We got to stop people from being like, well, I'm just going to wipe the board anyway, so I don't care. Take the thing. Nice knowing you. Yeah. Uh, or you've invested all of these counters into your creatures, uh, even if they're just your own. This protects us, gives us hexproof and indestructible uh, until end of turn. Closest thing to a counter spell in green, <laughs> uh, in commander anyway. I, I love her heroic intervention in this deck. So excited to see it reprinted once again. And then Elvish Warmaster. Whenever oh. one or more elves enters the battlefield, you get a 1-1 elf. It triggers only once each turn, but it's got that finisher ability on it of elves you control get plus two, plus two, and gain death touch until end of turn. Yep. That's how we close the game out. This is a board in a can and a win con. Uh, plus, it's only two mana. Yeah. Like, w this deck may not be focused on elves anymore because Elrond doesn't specify elves, but it gives us bodies to put counters on. And those one ones get a lot scarier. Yeah, I, th I think we're boat. still in the elven suburbs. Yeah, yeah. We still have yeah. 22 elves in the deck. Where There's was it? Many. 23 elves plus an elf in the command zone. Uh, yeah, love Elvish Warmaster in this kind of deck. All right, we are going to get into the pre con upgrade in just a few minutes, but first. A few words from our sponsors. Uh, okay, my turn. What is it, turn 20? Uh, oh, okay, don't worry. I think I can finally win. Even after this cyclonic rift? What? <laughs> oh! What? I'm still feeling good. Thanks to Liquid IV, I'm always ready for the long game. Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. And it's not just for diehard athletes and marathon runners. Even if you're just going to work for the day or spending a game night with friends, proper hydration is essential. One stick of Liquid IV hydrates you two times faster than water alone. Plus, you get essential vitamins and great flavors like pina colada or strawberry. Best of all, Liquid IV is helping communities in need. They've donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Hey, this is good. I think I could go a couple more turns. Yeah, we're all gonna mill out soon anyway. Ooh, even after this time twister. Oh, oh come, come on. on. Seriously? <laughs> oh my deck has no win cards. <laughs> real people, real flavor, real hydrating. 
Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. Whether you're searching for the latest sneaker drop, that iconic handbag, a timeless watch, or your next piece of classic jewelry, eBay authenticators are there verifying every detail of your purchase. Yep, we're talking each inch, stitch, tick, facet, and clasp that make the piece you're searching for worthy of your collection. eBay's authenticators are experts in their craft, true connoisseurs. And as leaders in their fields, they're making sure your items always arrive as authentic as your style. So go ahead, get that piece you've always wanted. And leave it up to the meticulous eyes of an eBay authenticator to make sure that watch movement is original, that glimmer is real gold, that rare sneaker is legit, or that handbag is really made of genuine leather. And never get faked over again. In a world full of fakes, it's time to get real with eBay authenticity guarantee. Everyone deserves real. Visit ebay.com for terms. Hey everyone, we are super excited to announce that we are now sponsored by Architect. Architect is the perfect place to build and store decks online, whether you want to build from scratch or catalog your collection. Everything is easy and intuitive. It's got the same feeling as when you sit at the table with your cards laid out right in front of you. Then, once your deck is done and ready to go, their built-in play tester is a great tool to make sure your brews work as intended. And now that Architect has partnered with EDH Rec, they have all the resources and data they need to really refine and perfect the platform. So even if you've tried Architect in the past, it's definitely worth taking a new look right now. Just go to Architect.com and start brewing on the best deck builder out there. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T.com. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for sticking with us. We are going to upgrade the Elven Council Precon Guide in just a few minutes. Uh, I wanted to talk about this because we did play with the budget a little bit. Yeah. We're, we're exploring uh, what what value we put to these uh, these precon upgrades. And like we tried a $10 budget and yeah, this we're one... we're seeing other budgets right yeah, now. Yeah, we're, we're seeing other budgets. We're experimenting with yeah. budgets. And we went decided to go the other way and, and blew out the budget for these because they are such cool, expensive decks. We're trying $50 upgrades. So we're going to add 10 cards and we're going to take 10 cards out, but we have $50 to do it. Make sure that this deck is in the best shape you can on a budget. Plus, you're spending a little bit more on the box. We know you're investing in it already. We want to make sure that the deck is playable and feels as good as possible possible yeah I, I think it's a little bit more realistic mm. so with those 50 bucks jake what were you trying to do with these upgrades well since we're going with elrond i tried to abuse the effect of uh the one one counters which i feel like i'm probably going to get mm -hmm. uh let's say two votes ideally uh and then i'll get a couple of creatures to expand my board like i, I feel like i can expect all of my fellas getting uh, two counters every turn. So how can we turn that uh, them counters into cash? Uh, <laughs> so the first card would be Fathom Mage. Oh. Uh, it's two, a green, and a blue. For a creature human wizard, it's 1-1 one, one with Evolve, which means whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if it has greater power and toughness than this creature, put a 1-1 one, one counter on this creature. And whenever you put a 1-1 one, one counter on Fathom Mage, you may draw a card. So good. So we're talking a lot of cards here. Probably three cards uh each turn it also makes the vote trickier so if you cast if you cast fathom mage into elrond and you have a couple of like little elves before that now it's like every time i give you counters i also give you a card it's like do i just give you a creature like at what point are counters worth counters in a card worth more than whatever creature you have on board yeah and you also have to value the body of the card itself yeah. like yes we're turning that counter trigger into cards but Along the way, you're getting this big stinky fathom mage too. So four mana for a big stinker and <laughs> ideally three or four cards is pretty good. Yeah, and Fathom Mage coming in at only 50 cents. And earlier I said uh, per turn, I mean per Elrond turn. Right. Yeah. So the turn that you get the Elrond ETB, you're getting uh, those counters. And like we said, there are some counter synergies in the deck. Uh, right. They do show up on other cards as well. Yeah, and this is one of the better, uh, whenever this gets counter, this happens. You know, there's also adapt cards and stuff like that. A lot of the times when I upgrade a card, I'm throwing in sign, uh, upgrade a deck, I'm throwing in signpost cards that say pay attention to this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a whole list of cards that I wish that I could have added that say things like this, uh, especially the adapt cards. Look those up. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. Rishkar Pima Renegade, 50 cents. Counters into mana. It's a miracle. 
Oh, this card is great in this deck. It's an elf. It enters. It puts two. It puts a plus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And then each creature you control with a counter on it has tap, add green. It does it all. And the reason that this kind of card wasn't in the deck is just because he's from another land. Right. Yeah. Not Lord of the Rings. (laughs) There's a few cards where this would be perfect in this deck, but his name is Rish Karpima Renegade. And I don't remember that part in the book. No, he didn't. <laughs> he doesn't show up even for a cameo. And so now all your stuff, including the stuff that you stole that has counters on it is a bunch of dorks. So if they give you a super useless thing. Fine. I'll use it for mana. I'll yep. build it up over time and make, make my own luck. Yeah, I, I really like Rishkar because he helps with that big mana plan that is still in the deck to some extent. Yep. Uh, makes that Genesis wave even bigger and scarier. All right, next card is Marwin the Nurturer. Uh, this is another card where it's got a funky name, so obviously it's not going in the Lord of the Rings deck. But whenever an elf enters the battlefield under your control, you get a uh, put a 1-1 counter on Marwin and then add an amount of... Uh, green equal to Marwyn's power. She's a, a two and a green for a one one to start out with. But over time, we're going to expect that Marwyn could get up to some crazy amount. Like, yeah, because of the amount that it's triggering it could be a 10 power easily. Yeah, it's whenever another elf enters the battlefield. So it puts counters on itself. Plus Elrond buffs it up uh, just by entering and then by voting. Marwyn's going to be one of the best elves in this deck in terms of, well, definitely in terms of mana generation, but also just in terms of being big. Yeah, yeah. We got a (laughs) big keister over here that you can't get through. Yeah, we love Marwyn. And then Herald of Secret Streams. Uh, this is another reason that we don't mind leaving uh, the elf world and going into Merfolk. It's three and a blue for a two, three Merfolk warrior. Creatures you control with one, one counters on them can't be blocked. Yeah. This is where uh, it took a, a chunk of the budget. This is an $8 card. Worth it. Uh, and absolutely worth it. Especially your like your commander says put counters on everything. Yeah. And you know you're gonna put at least one counter on everything every time you vote because that's your vote. Uh, so un- it makes your whole board unblockable. Ugh. Terrifying. All right. So now we're on to good stuff cards. Let's uh, look at Beast Whisperer. It's five bucks for two green green. It's an elf druid two three. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. So solid. Honestly, I think the only reason it's not in the deck is because they were like, we've given them enough value. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> like, like, they're like, we can't put a $5 card in there. Uh, yeah. With all that ramp uh, and the solid amount of card draw that you already have, you're probably going to stop at some point. Peace mm-hmm. Whisperer is going to make it so th- that engine can keep looping. Right. And it's an elf. Real solid. Uh, if you're voting, you're voting f- for this card. <laughs> 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 expropriate $22 Ugh, so so expensive and it's not just a dollar value it's seven blue blue for a sorcery it has council's dilemma starting with you each player votes for time or money for each time you uh, for each time vote you take an extra turn after this one for each money vote choose a permanent owned by the voter and uh gain control of it exile expropriate so i'll cast this card mm-hmm. and Starting with me, I'll choose time. I'll take an extra turn. What do you choose, Rachel? You're going to have a permanent, I guess, Jake. Come on, extra turn? You're just going to give me a permanent? How bad could it be? You can have an extra turn. Thanks. Never, no, never give do them, that. Never give them the extra turn. It's bad. Give them money. Never. Your stuff is worse than an extra turn. Also, I, I was in a game with Expropriate where I, I did the good thing. I was like, you can have a permanent. The next two opponents pick turn, turn. And the permanent he took from me, which was Josh Lequai, was Lord Windgrace. So he had three extra turns <laughs> with, with my Planeswalker, which wow. my opponents knew when they voted. God. This card is so powerful. <laughs> it's so powerful. Because... Best case scenario, you're taking four extra turns. <laughs> Worst case scenario, you're taking an extra turn and three permanents that you choose from your opponents. Yeah. Like, it's one of the best cards in Commander. And if you cast this and you don't win the game, a lot of people will call you the fool. So, yeah, you messed up. Not me, though, because I think you're smart. You're uh, always smart. <laughs> All right, so we did put a new commander in the command zone. So uh, we're going to need some new stuff to make sure he's working 
as well as he can. Uh, this is the oil oil can section. Yeah, so <laughs> next card is Croaking Counterpart. It's one and a green and a blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target non-frog creature, except it's a 1-1 one, one green frog. And has flashback for three, a green, and a blue. So we're going to have Elrond out, cast Croaking pa- Counterpart. We make a 1-1 one, one frog version of him. Legend rule checks uh to see that there are two of them and you have to choose one and sacrifice it so we'll get rid of the frog but we'll still get that etb yeah so this is an example of you could do a whole clone package in this deck you could get a whole bunch of crazy high budget clone cards um or maybe a mutate clone package Mm -hmm. uh to abuse the yeah i know i can't make another if i do that then it's going to become a bruticlad deck next and we got a whole big problem now you have to viewers are going to hate me i gotta add an extra (laughs) color i got a lot of work to do what i like specifically about croaking counterpart as the upgrade in this deck is because it's two clones in one yeah so it gives you you cast elrond you get that etb you get the clone etb and then you have another clone for elrond so it it just does a lot with just changing one card. Yeah, it's not the best clone spell well, yeah. the first time you cast it. But yeah. then the second time you cast it, you're not uh, you're pretty happy about it. Yeah. So Two clones in one. Load up the deck, but I only wanted to throw one in, and Croaking Counterpart was the one. Next one. Uh, Plus, it's only 75 cents. Yeah, that's a pretty good price for a clone spell. Uh, so then next is Essence Flux. This is another way to abuse the ETB. It's one mana, one blue for an instant exile target creature you control, then return that creature to the battlefield under its owner's control. If it's a spirit, put a 1-1 counter on it. It's not a spirit. It's we don't not. care. But it's just a one mana blink spell. Um, you could do a whole blink package in this deck as well. Mm-hmm. What I love about this is is the instant speed. It, using Elrond in a tricky way, yep. where if somebody attacks you and you're like, uh oh, are you like suddenly all of my creatures are bigger, or suddenly I have more creatures to block with, or now you have to give me a creature because if my creatures are bigger, you lose all your stuff. Like it. That's you, a great point. Like yeah. let's imagine someone's attacking me with their one single Ormond doll or some big creature, sure. and that's the only thing that they have. I'll flicker my commander. And they either have to beef up my board Mm -hmm. or they have to give me their single creature. Just at a time when they're not ready for it, that deal with the CTB. Yeah. So we love that. You can really manipulate how people feel about about a vote based on when you do it. Next is illusion of choice. 75 cents. There's shockingly few ways to interact with the vote in blue green. Like I remember seeing a lot more cards that say, you know, you can control the vote or you get to vote an additional time or something like that. Not in blue green. So this is uh, one blue for an instant. You choose how each player votes this turn, then draw a card. So you can cycle it away, just get the card, or you can turn Elrond into a much uh, more exciting spell. Right. You could say steal, steal, steal and counters, or if you just want the counters, go for it. That is a lot of power. Uh, Illusion of choice, only 75 cents. Essence flux, notably $1.75 suddenly. Yeah. Uh, All right. And then the last category is board in a box. This, you know, this is a Rachel Weeks card that we, she's like my guidance counselor in high school. (laughs) She's my commander guidance counselor. She suggested Avenger of Zendikar, which is eight bucks. Yeah, it's ridiculous. They keep reprinting it and it's still $8. Me and the other editors, we don't like Avenger of Zendikar because it makes editing so difficult. But... It's so good. It's it's really powerful, and it's really powerful with Elrond. Because you want this huge board when Elrond comes down, having cards that just say, I have a board, like Avenger of Zendikar, is like, I just have a board, or just make five tokens or something like that. For our friends who are in the car right now, we'll yeah. read it. Avenger of Zendikar is five green green for a creature elemental, five five. When it enters the battlefield, you create a zero one plant for each land you control. And then it has landfall whenever land enters the battlefield under your control you can put a one one counter on each plant creature you control it also just this is the kind of thing that's really going to pressure the vote mm-hmm. because when you have a huge board and and it looks scary you can't vote to give them counters because their threat just gets more lethal so you're forced into positions where you have to start giving your stuff away which isn't necessarily fun 
And if we look at a bunch of the other cards that we've added to the list here, it plays well with a lot of the friends that we were throwing in, like mm-hmm. a croaking counterpart. You Huge. get another Avengers Zeta car, and you get double landfall triggers, essence flux. Blanket, you get that even, ETB yeah, one even more, more time. plants. Yeah, and we love a lot of stuff about this. A rich car turns them all into mana dorks. Like Avengers Zendikar just belongs in this deck. Right. Even like Avenger of Zendikar combined with Herald of Secret Streams is like even if you don't have your commander you just play a land and suddenly all of your plants are unblockable <laughs> like that's like you're like ah uh, you just put 28 power on the board all of a sudden yeah and to double back to herald of secret streams play that card when you're ready to win the game oh yeah <laughs> um don't play scary stuff until it's really scary yeah uh all right so th- that those 10 cards uh total up to forty nine dollars and twenty five cents right on the button jake boss thank you that means we have 75 cents to choose our favorite art uh for our basic lands yeah that's good but lord of the rings you don't have to do that 75 cents to buy a stick of gum yeah just for you guys you enjoy that piece of gum (laughs) that is going to get this box into fighting shape but if you really really like Elrond, do you really like the elves voting thing? You can splurge even more. There are really powerful cards that you could put in right into this deck and they would be at home. Starting with Controversial, the Great Henge. A good magic card. Yeah. This category was like, you want me to just throw in good stuff? You got it. Yeah. So the Great Henge, $65. Yeah. $65 obviously blows the $50 budget out of the water, but it does everything this deck wants to do draws cards puts counters on stuff and it just gains life for some reason yeah the the real value is the life we gained along the way <laughs> <laughs> so then uh the next sports card is Ristic study it's 45 bucks right now uh classic classic gives us more cards it messes with our opponents a little bit yeah uh if they're responsible and they pay the one it messes with them otherwise it just fuels us up so yep it also like Ristic t- study and taxing effects tends to if you're if you're are in a responsible play group, they're committing less to the board, or they're committing to the board slowly, so that stealing ability gets more and more powerful. All right, we have added ten cards to the deck, which only means one thing: it's time to do the hardest thing in Commander. It's take ten cards out of this deck. We have to. We have to. We can't play one hundred and ten cards. Why? Or one hundred and twelve. What if Sheldon but... said I could? Okay, <laughs> I have a written note from Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> so. This was easy for a couple of cards, and mm. then it got really hard. Right. So I'm going to start with Gandalf, Westward Voyager, and Radagast. Both didn't belong in this deck for what we were trying to do. They might trigger a couple of times and give us something amazing, but for the amount of risk that you're taking by running those cards, it's not worth it. So we're pulling out those two. Uh, Opt is generally pretty good. But it's not good enough compared to the other stuff that we're doing that's more synergistic. Yeah, Opt is more targeted towards the Elven Scry thing that's also been built into Elves in Mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings. And because you weren't focusing on it, I think losing Opt is just fine. Right, because it only gains us really half a card, but costs us some. We don't like it. Uh, And then Learn from the Past. Uh, Interesting card. Target player shuffles their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. It's four mana. It's, yeah. for, it's an instant, which is important. Uh, you can get somebody with it, but it's four mana for graveyard hate. Yeah, we uh, we don't need that in this deck. We, no. we just focus on winning. Okay, focus <laughs> on you this year. Yeah, this is a permanent deck. Yeah. Uh, next card is Mirror of Gladriel. Uh, five mana, scry one, then draw a card. This ability costs one less to activate for each legendary you control. So ideally, tap scry one for free and draw a card. Mm-hmm. Okay. A little risky though. If you don't have a board. And th- this direction, we, we've cut two legendaries already from this list. Uh, five to draw a card is not a price that you're willing to pay. Yeah, no, it's also two to cast it to begin with. Mm-hmm. Like, you you, sh- you want to be doing other things. You want to just cast those legendaries and, you know, win this game. Come on, go out there, put on your jersey and win this game. <laughs> okay, next is Seeds of Renewal, uh, six and a green sorcery with Undaunted. So it costs one less to cast for each opponent. So in that seven player game, it's going to cost one green. Uh, <laughs> you return up to two creature card. excuse me, return up to two target cards from your graveyard to your hand and then exile Seeds of Renewal. It's fine. There are better options. It's fine. And the deck did have a, a decent amount of recursion in it already. So it's probably extraneous. Next is Song of uh, Arendil. Arendil. 
Right. What did I say? An end deal. It's a saga for three, a green and a blue. It, the first chapter is scry two, then draw two cards. Next chapter is create a treasure token and a two, two bird. Next is put a flying counter on each creature you control without flying. Cool. In two turns. Yeah, this is slow and projects a lot. So yeah. it, it tells people exactly how much time they have until they die. Yeah, they'll never see it coming as long as they don't pay attention for two turns. As long as they're not <laughs> listening when you read it. <laughs> I mean, there are pods like that. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's true. Th- this card does a lot, but it is five mana and probably has something to do with Radagast and Gandalf rather sure. than the deck we built. Yeah, Radagast loves it. That's great for Radagast, mm-hmm. but not for Elrond. Okay, <laughs> next is Sylvan Offering, X and green for a sorcery. Choose an opponent. You and that player each create an XX, XX green tree folk creature token. Then you choose an opponent. Could be the same one. Could be a different one. You and that player each create X11 elves. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's really interesting if that player is going to die for other reasons. <laughs> yeah. This this card can definitely be scary. It can win you a friend, but for how long? <laughs> the better it like the better it is for you, the better it is for your opponents. So it puts you in this weird position of like, do I make X3 where I give someone a 3-3 and 3-1-1s, but then I only get a 3-3 and 3-1-1s? Or do I make X7 and give somebody 7-1-1s? It's, uh, it's tricky. If... If they will attack for you, eventually they'll attack on you. Yeah. Also, Mama giving people said. tokens with Elrond is just bad because they'll start giving them oh, back yeah. to you. Oh, no, that's that's like, horrid. They're just like, I'm just going to give you a 1-1 elf or I'll give you this 3-3 three, three tree folk you just gave me. We don't like that. Yeah. So you make your commander worse. All right. Rich, you get to read this one. I'll do it. Uh, it is travel through Karadras. Karadras. Kar- Karadras. Thank you for reading that. <laughs> Done it. Five in a green for a sorcery with Council's Dilemma. Starting with you, each player votes for Redhorn Pass or Mines of Moria. This flavor is so good. Ugh, so good. Very thick. Uh, for each Redhorn Pass vote, search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. If you search your library this way, shuffle. For each Mines of Moria vote, return a card from your graveyard to your hand, then exile travel through Karadras. Uh, this is flavorfully awesome because they all like, they're like, Frodo, should we go through the mines? And everybody votes and they decide to go through the mines and then the mines are full of monsters. Spoiler alert. Uh, but it's a six mana ramp spell. <laughs> yeah. For six mana, you better be good. You better be flavorful. You better, you know, write a thank you note to me for casting you. If you yeah. cast this for six mana and you get four basic lands from it, you're like, oof, I guess I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, no, if somebody but, taps six mana, I'm going to go, oh, and then they do this. I'm like, huh. If you have a single scary card in your graveyard, you get the one scary card, I guess, that you t- that you choose, and then you get three lands tapped. Yeah. I, Just I, confirming. I, tapped, yeah. If this, will the council cards have this problem of if it's going to be good and effective for you and you don't have control of the vote, mm-hmm. then this is going to go bad. And like any card that's dependent on people are going to do what I expect them to do, or I'm going to be able to convince people to do what I'm expecting them to do. It's not great. Mm -hmm. Either you're going to be pressuring people in a way that's unfun and, you know, convincing them to do things that are not optimal for them, or it's just not going to work out for you. The latter is a lot more likely. Yeah. I would also like indicate that, this this card, if, if you want to do the more voting thing, you need a commander that's less scary on the board. Um, Elrond says, give me your stuff and I'm going to make them bigger. It's an intimidating card. You're like, you're trying to be in the lead. And having something that's like, come on. <laughs> come on. Work with me. I'm not the threat. Come on. Give me you back just, my pieces. <laughs> you just look a little disingenuous and you're going to have a hard time getting people to work with you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next card is Whisper Silk Cloak. Uh, it's interesting in this deck. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure oh. who it's for, honestly. I don't know. It's probably which... for them big snickers that you're playing with Gandalf. But, uh, but it, it's a little strange to this deck, especially in a go wide deck. If the ring temps you is part of your core strategy, then Whisper Silk Cloak starts to make a lot of sense. Uh, a shroud is kind of cool. There are other ways to get that, and it'll protect Galadriel if you're playing Galadriel, but personally, I don't think you should. Yeah. So, uh, Whisper Silk Cloak is a little slow these days. I don't, yeah. I don't tend to run it unless I'm making something yep. real big. 
All right, we've taken 10 cards out of this deck. We've put 10 cards back into it using $50. The deck is in fighting shape. It is Elrond at the helm and it is ready to murder. Uh, how do you expect it to play out on the battlefield? Uh, I expect that you're going to, ideally, first couple of turns, play some mana dorks, mm -hmm. get into Elrond a little earlier. Let's say turn four. You could probably do three, but yeah. let's say four. Uh, you'll get some of those early creatures from your opponents, uh, put counters on what you have, and then find some way to let Elrond die or flicker it or clone it or whatever you need to do so that you can get that happening again mm. and again until eventually you overwhelm everybody with big snoppies. Yep. And remember to hold up that protection. There's a couple of fogs in this deck and some and heroic intervention. If you are big and scary, they're going to find an answer for you. Protect yourself and your stuff. Uh, to the listeners, what do you think of the Elven Council Precon? Any cards we missed? Any cards we suggested to take out or add that you disagree with? Let us know. Uh, let us know what you think of the many options that could be in the command zone. Galadriel, Gandalf, Seardon, Elrond, Aristor, and Radagast could all be in the command zone. So it means this deck can go in a lot of interesting directions. If you are buying this pre-con or you're buying any of the cards that we just talked about to upgrade it, go to cardkingdom.com slash command. Card Kingdom has a great selection of all of the cards you are looking for so you can get them in the printing that you're looking for and the condition that you're looking for and they can show up on your doorstep in one healthy package. I received I received a package from Card Kingdom in the pouring rain <laughs> when it was like raining all of those months in, in uh, Los Angeles and we were like, what is going on? And I received a soaking wet Card Kingdom package and I was like, oh my God, all of my cards are going to be murdered. And I opened it and it was in the little plastic case and it had been ta taped up and every card in it was safe and flat and all completely dry. So, And you know a representative from Card Kingdom was in a wetsuit and yeah. flippers getting your package to your door to your, on time. To your door. The service. Uh, no, if there's something that doesn't work out with your package, Card Kingdom has the team that can handle it and make sure that everything gets taken care of. Again, support the show while picking up magic cards or sealed product from Lord of the Rings. Go to cardkingdom.com slash command. And if you're as excited about Lord of the Rings as I am and you want all of the accessories to go along with your pre-cons, go to ultrapro.com slash command to pick up the play mats, the deck boxes, the sleeves, the dice, the binders. It feels like they're really going to blow out Lord of the Rings and oh, just yeah. make as much as they possibly can. It's not just useful. It's beautiful. It's cool. There's so many play mats. There's like a sweet Mount Doom one. There's one with Sauron on it, which feels like an intimidation tactic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that the, with this new art, we're able to kind of recalibrate our brains and get to know the stories even better, mm -hmm. uh, uh, closer to the books. Yeah, I what I want to do with these is I want to buy all of the precons and I want to sleeve them up as they are in the box, and I want to buy all the playmats to match and put them in a little trunk, and it's going to be my little like Lord of the Rings Commander Knight box. <laughs> that's a yeah, that's a really smart way to get people into magic because a lot of folks are familiar with Lord of the Rings, and yeah. we're gonna see. A nice influx of players who are coming here just from that IP. Yeah. Uh, and that's a great way to welcome them is to buy these boxes, put them on the shelf and say, hey, check it out. Do you want to be Elrond, Galadriel? Yeah, get them the get them the, the Galadriel playmat and the Galadriel uh, box and send them a little gift basket. Trick your friends into Magic the Gathering with Ultra Pro products. They're that beautiful. <laughs> Again, go to ultrapro.com slash command. Uh, okay, and we are. I've talked a lot about magic today. We've talked all about a lot of magic cards, but we're going to move to the end step, and we're going to talk about something cool outside the world of magic. And you've got something prepared. I'm I excited. Do. Yeah, uh, NPR Tiny Desk concerts. They oh, get they're me through so my fun. Week. It gets me through my week. And you know what's easy mode is you just sort by popular. You get mm -hmm. Anderson Pack. You get uh, Thundercat. You get Tank and the Bangers. You get a ton of great stuff in the popular section. But there's a few that aren't quite at the top that I would recommend so i would start uh, with for those who aren't familiar tiny desk oh, yeah. concerts are live performances in the npr offices yeah they've been doing it for like 10 12 years ever yeah. of of like popular bands especially up and coming ones and they perform live in like a very small space and it feels very intimate and they sound great and it's an equalizer just, yeah it's really cool videos yeah, the way that they mic it up is they just take one of the microphones that we use on game nights and just plop it down there's 
more to it, I'm sure. But the feel is it's just these people in a room with the same microphone, the same camera, the same location. You know, you'll get Taylor Swift in there who's got the same thing to work with as uh, Moon Hooch. And they're playing saxophones with traffic cones sticking out of the end of it <laughs> out of the bell i know a saxophone <laughs> anyway uh so the ones that i would recommend checking out some of my favorites are tyler childers oh, i had to i love tyler childers i'm so glad that you said that because i had to google how to pronounce his name i, I think childers is right <laughs> yeah it is yeah. it's spelled like childers though yeah yeah uh so it's confusing uh you know some people are into country and folk music because it's good, but Post Malone turned me on to Tyler the Childers, and uh, so you know, just saying. I love. I really like folk music. I mean, I was raised in like '90s pop country era, yeah. and I sort of, as I got older, I still stuck in the in like the country Americana vein a lot of the way. Yeah. But there's some really, really amazing voices, and Tyler Childers is one of them. Yeah, the, the song that he starts off uh, that concert with is just pain. It's, oh, it kills me. And another one is Red Barat. It's a really cool Indian group. Uh, <laughs> Gaurav actually, I showed him this tiny desk. And he's like, dude, it's like Indian ska music. <laughs> <laughs> like, kind of. That is such a crazy endorsement. I love That's it. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's really awesome. And then uh, Randy Newman, you know, uh, famous from Toy Story, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's got this song in there that I think I'm going to dance to at my wedding called She Chose Me. And <laughs> it's really sweet. That's nice. And the Sesame Street one is beautiful. I, you know, I, I, if you've spent time raising kids at all, uh, the little toy instruments and all the kids in the audience are really sweet. And then Mandolin Orange. Uh, this is a really strange note to end a podcast on, but if you've gone through loss at all, uh, this is for you. It's a really intimate, hard thing to soak yourself into, but dive in. Yeah. Mandolin Orange, beautiful tiny desk concert. This was a great end step. I loved it so much. Um, and we're not going to end on that. No, we're going to end on thank yous to our amazing team. We love our team at the command zone who make this, uh, make this episode and all of our episodes possible. Uh, so thank you to Craig Blanchett, Damon Lentz, Arthur Meadowcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Josh Murphy, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Gaurav Galati, Jamie Block, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limberger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yip, Eric Lem, Josh Lee Kwai, and Jimmy Wong. Wow. And... <laughs> To Jake Boss for doing an awesome pre-con upgrade. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy for folks who support our sponsors and join our Patreon yeah. and allow us to do this amazing job uh, for you. You know, we're thinking of you. Every time we turn the camera on, this is all about you. So yeah. we appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching, everybody. And we'll see you next time. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. Blah, 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 bl